Okay, so today we're gonna make m tropical monkey wine. Um, I have 10 pounds of sugar, one pound of grapes that I picked from our yard, but any dark grapes will work. Uh, if you prefer, you can use um, white or uh, red grape juice, grape from concentrate, either grapes um, or raisins. Uh, I have six pounds of bananas. I have a cup of tea. A pound of citrus, I'm using clementines, but lemons, oranges, um, even limes would work. And I have five 64 ounce pineapple juice jugs. So we're going to get started. Okay, so what I have on the stove actually is just some water that I'm going to put all the fruits into and bring them to a boil. Um, I have, for the sugar, I actually used some pineapple juice in the pan. Um, it's not going to really boil that much, so um, the juice is fine. I'm worried about adding too much water. I have two and a half gallons total of pineapple juice, and I'm only going to put about four in, so I'll add the water later, but I'd like to keep it down a little bit, depending on how much the sugar is going to take up in space. So that's what I'm going to do right now. We're going to add um, five pounds of sugar to this pan and five pounds of sugar to that pan, and then we're going to... Um, cut up all the fruit so we'll come back when I'm at that point. Okay instead of adding um, the sugar to these two pans I actually needed them for the bananas and the oranges and grapes because they wouldn't all fit in this one pan but this one has um, the bananas, some oranges and the grape mix. As you can see that water is a lot more purple. Well you can't really have the black spoon but there we go. Um, you can see it's From the, from the purple grapes, it's turning, you know, that one's going to end up being a darker purple by the end of the time it's all done. Um, then we have this one, and I actually put the tea in this water. Uh, again, it's just a cup of tea. doesn't matter what kind of tea you use. You can use, you know, a flavored tea. This one's just a dark tea. It's just, um, you know, regular. I don't need to, it doesn't matter what brand it is. They're all the same. You just need it for the tannins. Um, and I just smushed up the oranges with my, <coughs> excuse me, with my fingers, uh, just to get the juices out. They're all boiling in the same pot, so it doesn't matter if the juice is in there and the skins or, um, yesterday I separated them, but I'm waiting on a delivery man for my carboy, so I'm just trying to get ahead of the game here so it's all cooled down and ready, because this will all be going right into my carboy. Um, I'm going to strain it first and then pour it in, but all the fruit's going to be left behind. I'm not putting any of this fruit in today. That's why I'm boiling it so it all, all the juices and stuff comes out. <clears throat> um, and this one is just the regular water. Uh, there's a few grapes in here. It didn't all quite fit in that other pan, but um, so that's what we have there. And again, all the oranges I just smushed down, the bananas. Uh, j I just cut them into little slices. Um, and they're going to all break apart eventually. Um, again, you take um, the stems off, the tops and bottoms, uh, the stickers obviously. Uh, this orange was kind of mushy, so I didn't want to use it. It was probably dropped, but um, just to be safe, I don't want to use anything that's bad fruit. Your wine's only going to be as good as the fruit you use, so you know if you're using moldy, rotting, disgusting fruit, that's what your wine's going to be. So um, if you get the dark, uh, the bananas with the bruises all over them. It's just the skins. That's fine. That just means they're riper. Uh, and actually, I got mine reduced because they were like that. So uh, keep that in mind. You can actually save some money that way. So we'll be back when these are all done. Again, I'm going to boil these for about uh, probably 30 minutes today because, like I said, I'm not keeping the fruit in. So I just want to get all the juices out as possible. So these are going to be on for 30 minutes, and I'll be back. Okay, so there's uh, about 10 minutes left on the timer. As you can see, this stuff is bubbling away nicely. Um, no, I get boxed. I'm gonna get boxed. So that one's doing great. Uh, this one's a little behind that one. It's still cooking up nicely, but it's not as, I guess, frothy would be the word. Uh, and this one, too, is bubbling up. <clears throat> now, if you could smell my kitchen, it smells like banana bread. And I am hungry. So again, this one had the... Uh, the grapes in this one, that's why it's a purpley color. This one had pineapple juice and tea. And again, this one had pineapple juice and a few of the grapes that were not able to fit in. Uh, 
Um, and look what has arrived. So I, um, yes, I bought it. It came today. Uh, I put three cans of pineapple juice in there already. Uh, I have this one left. I'm going to do the sugar melted in that one. Uh, once these ones cool off, you can't pour this hot stuff into there. So I'll have to strain these off so there's no, <clears throat> excuse me, so there's no fruit going into my carboy at all. Uh, I have a nylon mesh cloth, kind of like a cheesecloth I'm going to use to strain this out. Um, and then from there it'll go, the, just the juice in there. And then we'll add the sugar water once that cools off. And we will uh, add some yeast when it's room temperature. So that's where we're at at this point. Okay, so I just want to point out that this is 100% um, fruit juice. You don't want anything with preservatives in it because it will not allow your yeast to start working. Um, now, if you wanted to, you can just dump out, you know, up to maybe here of the pineapple juice. Um, fill it up with a cup or two of sugar. Shake it up good till the sugar's dissolved. Uh, add probably, you could probably do two of these for one pack of yeast. You could probably stretch it to three, but I, I would only do two. Um, and if you wanted to, you could put a balloon on here. You could get an airlock to fit in here with the bung. Or you could simply turn this until it's, you know, just to tight to touch and then turn it back a little bit. So it, you know, there's some movement to the lid, but it's on enough that a bug couldn't get in there. Um, <clears throat> and just leave that simply would make wine. Uh, I put a bunch of different fruits in for, you know, different flavors and such. But yeah, you simply could just use one of these if you wanted to and just make, you know, just pineapple wine. Um, just let it sit until it clears. After <clears throat> after probably a month or so, I would tighten this. Uh, shake it up a couple times and tighten it, and then let it clear. But uh, you don't want your wine to oxidize, and that's if oxygen gets inside. And uh, if you left this cap open, I, I would think enough would be getting in that after it's done fermenting, I would tighten it. Um, which is why we use airlocks because it doesn't let any oxygen back in um, to the to the container. See how that? I don't know if you can see it very well, but there's another piece over top, and in here, there's um, where the CO2 comes out and it bubbles out, but nothing can get back in through the water. So that's how it keeps it sealed. So no oxygen gets in this bucket other than when I open it to stir it, which is you know again filled up with CO2. So once it stops fermenting, you shouldn't be opening and closing them anymore. There's no reason to. Like I said, we stir this for five to seven days, and after that, you know, it's good. It's good to just sit and leave it. Um, that one's ready for some juice, but it's still still boiling. I still got two minutes left on the fruit, and then it's going to have to cool um, until I can pour it through the bag in to the strainer into my carboy um, again because I don't want the fruit in there it's too hard for, it, to me it's too hard to clean it takes up too much room and uh, I use a pail if I'm gonna keep the fruit in but that's why I'm boiling all the juices out of it so it should be it should be uh, almost done there's you know one minute left and then I'll let it cool and pour it in there so we'll be back okay as you can see I've poured just the juice back in the pan uh, Put the bag back on the crock pot. As you can see, it's still got some stuff in it, but it's all on the inside, so that's fine. And uh, here's the wonderful banana uh, stuff we're going to just throw away. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some sugar to this pot, and um, hopefully it's still hot enough, it'll dissolve it. And then I'm going to drain the other two, and again, uh, get the 10 pounds of sugar mixed in in some of these pots. And then we're going to let it cool and pour it all in the carboy. Um, I still have this extra pineapple juice that if I need a little more liquid for the sugar, I can pour it in. But I don't think I will. I think I can just go ahead and pour that in there now, but uh, we're going to wait and see.